And I'll talk about two groups of people where we get our health advice. We get our health advice, the people on the top, those represent your doctors and the health authorities. And the people on the bottom represent the media and advertising. And we get a lot of uh, advice from these sources. If we talk about the media, the media is just going to confuse you. And your doctor, if he doesn't have a personal experience with low carbohydrate, high fat diet, he's going to think you're crazy when you tell him you're eating low carb, high fat. The truth is that only you can know the answer about what's healthy for you. Only you can know it. You can only know it from your own experience. So just do it. You know, divorce the wheat. Cut the killer carbs out of your diet for three months and just see what happens. You can judge from your own results the same way that I judge from my results. That's how I made up my mind. It was not based on... I didn't make... I've read a lot of books about low-carb diets and health, but I read them after I lost the weight because I wanted to see, I was so amazed, I wanted to see why does this work, what's the physiology behind it. And so there are basically in, in the world, there are two kinds of doctors. There's one kind who is most doctors, uh, like most doctors, is well-intentioned, well-educated, intelligent guy who really wants to help you. But he doesn't have either a personal experience or a patient experience with the power of a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. And that's why he doesn't recommend it. And then there are the doctors that we talked about earlier. All of these doctors who, who speak publicly about the low carbohydrate, high fat diet, these people have all had a personal experience. So there are those who have had an experience and those who haven't. And those who have become sold out believers just like me. If you need a doctor here in town, go see Dr. Ben Edwards. You can make an appointment. And he uses the low-carb, high-fat, anti-inflammatory diet along with probiotics and nutrients. Other things that aren't recommended in most doctors' offices, and he's had outstanding results. The number for his clinic is 771-1160. So if you're looking for a doctor who understands and will work with you hand-in-hand, -hand, you can be on the same path then that's who you should call here in town. In fact, I'll tell you the reason why I gave, the reason I first gave this talk last year was that I met with a surgeon. He was a bariatric, a bariatric surgeon, which is a weight loss surgeon. I saw him at a coffee shop and we started chatting. And he said, I, he said, what brought you to Lubbock? And I said, well, my family is in, I have family in Odessa. We really like Texas Tech. It's a great place to raise your family. It's a great place to be a doctor. We like the people here. We like the university. And uh, we love it here. And I said, well, what? I asked him, the bariatric surgeon, I said, what brought you to Lubbock? He said, well, Lubbock is the second fattest city in Texas. So it wasn't about how great the people were or the university. Lubbock is a place for where bariatric surgeons can shoot fish in a barrel. Lubbock is the barrel, and we are the fish. Okay? Next, I want to talk about these people. These are the media and advertising. And we talked earlier that media and advertising are a horrible place to get your information because you get this headline. Eggs leak to diabetes. And guess what the headline is tomorrow? Eggs may improve your glucose control. So which is it? I mean, are eggs bad for diabetes or good for diabetes? And then you get a headline like this. Processed meats lead to cancer. And then, hot dog. They may prevent cancer. <laughs> so which is it? This, guy, this guy's picture up at the top. His name is Tom Naughton. And Tom Naughton made an exceptional video called Science for Smart People. And I recommend you just Google Tom Naughton Science for Smart People. It's on his fat head website. All of those headlines, number one, are real headlines. Number two, they come out of what are called population-based studies. And we said, we mentioned this earlier. Population-based studies can show association. But population-based studies never, they cannot show causation. And so what the media that, that's why the headlines always say are linked to, or may improve, are associated with, uh, because they can't, population based studies can't show causation. 
And that's why you get the contradictory headlines every other day. In Tom Lawton's video, Science for Smart People, he also explained uh, about clinical trials and drugs and uh, the way they're reported to us versus what the results actually mean. And these are some slides from Tom Lawton's talk. You should watch his talk. But basically, he talks about the Lipitor clinical trials. Uh, they treated men with Lipitor for 10 years and men with placebo for 10 years. These men were all at high risk for a heart attack, okay? And two men over 10 years in the Lipitor group, two of 100 had a heart attack. In those, group, in those treated with a placebo, which means not treated with Lipitor, three out of 100 had a heart attack. So that means that for every 100 men who took Lipitor for 10 years, one heart attack was prevented. Those are admitted high risk for a heart attack. So the difference, you know, three minus two, one. But that's not the way that uh, that's not the way that these are reported to you statistically. Statistically, they're reported as what's called a relative risk reduction, which means you take the number one and subtract the smaller number divided by the biggest number, like this. Smaller divided by the biggest, subtract one minus that is 0.36, so 36 percent. And the way that those clinical trials where one heart attack was prevented in 10 years for every 100 men taking Lipitor was reported and advertised like this. Lipitor reduces the risk of heart attack by 36%. The problem with this advertisement is that it gives the impression that one third of the men taking Lipitor are benefited. But the truth is, one in 100 men who take Lipitor and are at high risk for a heart attack are actually benefited. But the question is, the thing is, they're all true. They're all different ways to state the information. They're all true, but you know, which makes the best ad and the best headline? Lipitor reduces the risk of heart attack by 36%. That sounds impressive. Or for every 100 men, who are at high risk for a heart attack and who take Lipitor every single day for 10 years, one heart attack is prevented. That's also completely true. Or this drug was found to benefit 1% of the men who take it, which is also true. Or one heart attack is prevented for every 365,000 doses of Lipitor taken. So, the media and advertising, they're interested in selling things. And the advertisements on TV for all the drugs to ask your doctor about, like Dr. Helton mentioned, they're about selling things. And you really don't need a lot of these drugs. You can, you can improve much of your health just with a low carb high fat diet. So, since your doctor probably doesn't have experience with it, you need to do your own reason, reading, listen to your own body, and be convinced by your own results. Because that's what convinced me. What convinced me was my weight loss results, I felt better, I had more energy, my blood pressure went down almost uh, 20 points, and it was easy. But people ask all the time, what about heart attacks? What about heart disease? If you eat a high-fat diet, aren't you going to drop dead of a heart attack? Atherosclerosis is what causes heart attack and stroke. And if you're on a low-fat, high-carb, excuse me, if you're on a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet, watch all these risk factors that disappear. Diabetes, gone. Hypertension, gone. Dyslipidemia which is dyslipidemia, which is low HDL, high tr uh, triglycerides, gone. Obesity, gone. Inflammation, chronic inflammatory diseases, CRP and fibrinogen, they're all related to inflammation, and those all improve. Homocysteine improves, lipoprotein A improves, metabolic syndrome, gone. High blood pressure, gone. Diabetes, gone. We mentioned those, and obesity, gone. So the, the, the only things that the low carbohydrate, high fat diet really can't improve or doesn't improve are things that you can't change, like your age. You know, low carb diet can't change your age or your family history. 
In cigarette smoking, you have to do that on your own. I'll recommend you a book if you need to stop smoking. It's called Alan Carter's Easy Way to Stop Smoking. A friend recommended that. So what you should do is take action today and go ahead and cut the killer carbs. You know, cut them out of your diet and just cut the bottom off the food pyramid. Really eat more real food, less packaged food, and more healthy fats. And embrace your body. You know, Dr. Helton says, well, your body was born for health. And the way that I always put it is that you were born perfect. Your body is perfect right now, just as you are right here. You just have to feed your body fuel that it understands. And your body doesn't understand cereal grains and processed and refined carbohydrates. In order to do this, you really need to reprogram your subconscious mind because there are lots of decisions that you make at a subconscious level about food. You fear fat subconsciously. You think that uh, whole wheat bread and oatmeal are healthy for you subconsciously because you've been programmed that way for 30 years. And so there's a CD that you all have in the handout, and also you can download it online. Excuse me. Uh, the CD are a set of meditations. And those meditations, what you do is you listen to, there are four meditations. Listen to meditation one before bed each night for three weeks. Meditation two before bed each night for three weeks. Meditation three before bed each night for three weeks. And meditation four. And you do those meditations uh, three weeks at a time, each of them for a total of 12 weeks. And that helps to reprogram your subconscious mind. And this is the brain, and you may have heard the expression that you know humans only use 10% of their brain, or they only use 2% of their brain. That's because the other 90 to 98% is your subconscious mind. When you walk, you never think about which foot to put forward first. You just have to know where to go. And that's because you, your brain subconsciously runs the walking program. When you ride a bike, the first time you ride a bike, it's really difficult. And it's difficult until you learn how to do it. And after you learn how to do it, riding a bike is as easy as riding a bike. That's the expression. That's because you run the bike ride, bicycle riding program. And all these, there are all these connections throughout your brain. And as you do the meditations, you're going to start erasing some of the connections in your subconscious mind. The first one you'll erase is the whole brain's are healthy program. you got to get rid of that. And as you keep doing the meditations, You'll erase the fear, the fat, the cholesterol program. Erase the eat more carbs and less fat, and erase the eat the food pyramid. But the good thing is the meditations, they don't leave your mind a blank. They don't erase all the stuff in your head. They replace the whole grains are healthy with get healthier with less whole grains. They replace the fear, the fat, but the body actually runs better on fat and cholesterol. They replace eat the food pyramid with eat real food, foods that don't require labels. And they replace the eat more carbs with the cut the killer carbs program. I've had feedback from people who did the program last year and people who came to the seminar or watched it online. And those people who both watched the online seminar and did the meditations had the best results. Those people who just did one, either the seminar or just did the meditation, they sometimes didn't have as good results. So the meditations are a powerful tool. The whole idea of it is to take the willpower out of changing your diet to where you don't have to think about it. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to have internal conflict uh, in order to change your diet. So reprogram with the website. And first of all, the meditations. The 2013 seminar video is worth watching. It shows everything I ate for two weeks along with other information. There's a reading list there and suggested videos, uh, which is a similar list to what you have in your handout. And the question is, will it work for me? And there's only one way really to know. You've got to try it. And I recommend you try it for three months and see what kind of results you have. See what happens to your blood pressure, what happens to your body, what happens to the way your, your pants fit, your blood sugar, and all of those things. So now I'd like to introduce the next guest speaker. This is Bob Barnes. Um, he is, been, he's been a friend of mine for, since uh, we grew up together in Odessa. And he did the Cut the Killer Carbs last year. 
and that was him then, this is him now, and he's, he's uh, not only done the diet, but it's improved his exercise performance, and he'll tell you more about that. Thanks, Thanks Justin. Appreciate it. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Let me give you, let me give you this little bit. Okay. Good to be here today. Yeah, I, I, uh, I talked to uh, Justin last year. <coughs> he was telling me about, about his, about his uh, program. And so I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot. And I'll be honest, I thought, man, that's, that's, that's going to be hard. You know, it's going to be hard not to eat carbs. And I'm going to be, you know, like all, all everybody's going to think that there's something like, you know, like, like, like I can't eat things. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm weird, but that, that's not how it was at all. Um, I started doing it, and uh, it was very, very easy. I ate what I wanted to, basically. I ate things that were really good to eat, that were, I thought that were bad to eat before, but they were really good. It improved everything about me, and uh, I lost uh, 40 pounds in, uh, in three months, and it improved everything. It improved my health. Uh, I actually haven't been sick since I did. I started the, the diet. I haven't been sick like one day since. Um, my uh, energy's up, uh, and uh, I feel I feel better, and I look better, and, and now I, I I feel better about about myself. So I I believe in it. I uh, I, uh, uh, I I sleep better, and uh, it's really been a pretty amazing deal. Easy to do too. Like you can eat things, like 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 you know, instead of eating um, like um, donuts, you know, in the morning, I just eat eggs, and I can eat as many eggs as I want, and uh, that's that's nice. So, does anybody have any uh, questions for me? Yeah, tell them what kind of uh, health food store you run. Tell yes. Them what health food store you run. Yes, I actually own a health food store. It's called a a, 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 a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> And uh, I, I market that a lot because people I see people like around the town and they say, man, what you do? Like 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 you look like you look great. It's like well I just I just eat in my place all the time. And so it's actually improved sales by ten percent. I'm kidding, man. Nine percent, but um, anyway, yeah. But I guess the thing is like at, at, at barbecue, I can eat barbecue all day. And I, don't, I mean, I, there are things I can't eat. You know, like I can't eat like the like you know like like potato salad. But you know, I can eat I can eat brisket and it's great. You know, I can eat you know turkey and I mean it's really it's good. So and it actually has been good for my business. I actually can tell people that. And then also on top of that, also you know like back when I, I, I met Justin, I was I weighed about what I weigh now, <laughs> and uh, I was I, like I was in track. I ran. I just got totally like totally out of that. When I started doing this, I, I told him I was like, I don't think I can do that because I need to have carbs so I, so I can exercise and run. Well, I actually had more like energy. I was able to run and exercise better. In fact, the other day I ran, I ran my fastest two mile in 18 years. So I, that's just since I was in high school. So it's, it's given me a, a lot of energy. Um, it's really, I mean, just. You know, I get compliments everywhere, everywhere I go, um, and uh, it's really been a great thing. It's 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 worth it's worth doing. I'll tell you that today. I believe in it. That, that's why I, I told them I would be here today because I believe in it. I mean, I did it at first. I was like, I don't know about this. I like I like you, Justin, but I just don't know. But I mean, as you can see, it really has given me good results. And it, I went from being that guy to, 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 to the good looking guy on the left. <laughs> so, so. so, how much weight did you lose? I lost 40 pounds. I went from 210 pounds to 170 pounds. And that was in three months. And I, I went on a diet. I never like went like hungry. You know, that's the thing is, you know, a lot of people get on diets and they're hungry. And it's miserable. And they, it makes it hard, you know. And that's, that's the thing. So, yeah, I lost, I lost 40 pounds. And, I, and you know, I, I exercised when you we know, went like with it. But... You know, I just it, it, like I, I was healthy. Like I said, I hadn't been sick. Uh, my uh, sister started doing the diet. She's lost a lot of weight. She, she, she's always wanted to have a child. She wasn't able to have a child. Now she's going to have a child. She's actually um, she's one month pregnant, and she, she's lost. I think she's lost about thirty pounds since she got on it. So, 
Any questions on like, what I eat? I mean, I tell you, you know, I eat a lot of, 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 of ribs and sausage and brisket, which is fine. Sure. Okay. In Justin's previous series, I'm just curious if you ever thought eat something that like you shouldn't, which maybe you don't, and that's fine. Like do you get do you feel ill from does it make you feel bad? No. And I mean you it, something or you like, No, I, I don't. But I will tell you, I mean sometimes like there's things that like I stopped eating, you know, and like when I eat them now, it does. I, I mean I can tell like a difference. Like before like you know, like like I like upset, you know, like I, I stomach a lot. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, once I started going on, this on the diet that he, that he recommends, I didn't have that. You know, when, it, when you go have like a bunch of like, you know, Cheetos, I mean, my son would be upset. But it, but it really didn't. I mean, it, I mean, I, I, I cheated every now and then, Justin, sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. Yeah. You know, the, the idea is, if you've achieved your ideal weight, your ideal level of health, and you feel great, and you want to go, it's your birthday, or you want to go with the kids and go get ice cream sometime? You can. Well, that's the thing, that's what I was going to say is, and you can, and you don't feel bad about it. Because, you you know, when you've lost 40 pounds, you, you feel good about how you look, and you have, and really, it's just how your mind works now. You, you don't really miss that, but when you do, like, you don't feel bad. You know, people feel bad, they, they, they feel guilty, they have that self, that's, you know, I used to have it, I think, man, I shouldn't be in this, you know. I shouldn't do this. You know, it actually hurts your self-esteem. Now you, you, don't, you don't have that problem. And no, it doesn't make you. But but you can't tell the difference. You know, there's there's a. I mean, if you eat a lot of like you know a lot of you know, bread, it, like you can just tell a difference between how you if you feel today and how it, 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 it reminds you how you used to feel. But no, it doesn't make you feel ill. The one thing I've noticed is that particularly indigestion. That um, I used to think that if I ate Mexican food, it was because of the spices or the fat or something that gave me the indigestion. No, it's the wheat. It's the wheat that's in the Mex Mexican food that would give me indigestion. And so if I, that's the main thing that I'll notice is I'll sit there and I'll think, oh, I haven't had indigestion in ages. Well, what, what, what did I, what did I eat this previous meal? So that I'll notice, and it also depends on your level of. Uh, carbohydrate sensitivity, or if you do have digestive issues or allergic issues. Like my son, if he cheats, he sneezes, snots for three days, you know? And so that, that's his symptom, that's his sensitivity. Um, I did before though. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's, what, that's how he was before, he, uh, before we cut the wheat. And uh, when we were in college, Bob went to when we were in college, Bob went with uh, his family to a trip to Mexico City. His dad's a restaurateur, and he got like uh, intestinal disease or something. Salmonella. And it, his intestines have been kind of messed up at that time. But they're better since he cut the wheat, the irritating wheat out of his diet. So, what do you recommend for like car loading before exercising or after? You know, that's. I would look up. I would look up Professor Tim Noakes and see what he recommends for uh, athletes. There's several. There's Tim Noakes, there's Z. Sean Array, and there's Peter Brucker. Because all those guys are sports physicians who train professional athletes. And I'll see what do they recommend. Uh, at the, in the afternoon session today, there'll be a lady who is a um, who is a performance biker. She goes on long bike rides, and she's going to talk some in this spot also about uh, what she did when she went low carb and uh, how she, I don't know, she went on a 60 something mile bike ride and how she went, did it low carb. Um, she went, the way she did it was she got completely into ketosis. She got all the carbs out completely to where she was in total ketosis and she did the smooth means burning fat. And she knows she was in ketosis because she tested her blood with keto, keto the thing that you break your finger to see if you're in ketosis. And she did the whole bike ride on keto, which is burning fat. Yes, ma'am. Um, I did the Atkins diet about two years ago, and I noticed that I had like bad breath. How do you keep that from happening? That's what people told me it was because I didn't have any carbs. So how do you keep from it affecting your breath or is anybody else experience that? Uh, no. No, you never heard of that before. I, you know, I don't know. It, you might, it might be, if you actually are on super low carb, you're down to less than 20 net carbs per day, and 
your body is in allowing ketosis, you make it about, it's called nutritional ketosis, you make it about four, uh, you're eating, make it about four or five millimolar ketones per day. Then you're making some ketones that come off of your breath. Um, I've had that problem. No, no. But I have, I have been told that by a physician before that when you're in ketosis, that you will have really bad breath. I'm sorry? I'm glad you don't own a donut yeah, shop. Yeah, if I had a, a donut shop, I would have had to have um, sold it because I wouldn't have felt, felt, like, felt good about myself anymore. <laughs> any, any other questions? What barbecue place? Uh, it's, it, it's in Odessa, Texas. It's, it's, it, it's Rock and Q Smokehouse. Okay. Best best barbecue in the basin for uh, twelve years running. <laughs> Where is it? it, it it's in Odessa, Texas. Odessa. Yeah. What was the name of the market? Uh, yeah, it's it's it, it's Rock and Q Smokehouse. Yeah. Any, any other questions? What about when you do? Uh, to, add, to answer the whole question about exercise, I mean, if if you do the long run, what do you do differently when you diet? Anything? You know, I really don't. I, in fact, I mean, I had more energy than I, I did. Like, I was able to like run further and longer than I had since I was a high school, you know, athlete. And um, so, I, really, I, that's to me, that's totally like a myth. I mean, I, I know that people say that, and like, I, I, I've read it like in, in magazines and you know, like running cool magazines. But I've talked to like other people that are, that are runners, and like they. They basically have like you know kind of tried what I've done, and they haven't told that to know to know it's a difference. So, um, you know, one thing is, uh, I don't, like I, 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 I cut out a lot of other stuff too. Maybe that that was part of it. You know, a lot of you know, like you know, you know sugar yeah. stuff like that. But uh, and you know that's one of the things that I did along the way was. Um, I'll t to kind of tell you my weight story, which is in a way it's similar to Bob's in that, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard here. It's similar to Bob's in that I said, look, I'm done being fat. I'm done with the killer carbs. I'm done snoring every night. And when I was in high school, I was 180 pounds and I started running and I became I would run like five miles a day every day and I got to 160 pounds. And then I went to college and put on the freshman 30. Supposed to be freshman 15, but I was uh, probably drinking too much beer and got put on the freshman 30. And then sometime during my residency, I got depressed. And when I was depressed, I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat lunch. I wouldn't eat dinner most nights. And I don't know what weight I got to here. But then I moved to Lubbock. I wasn't impressed anymore. And I was two, got to 213.5 pounds. And this is when I decided I was done with the carbs. And my weight, I, I lost weight, and my goal was 180 pounds. 180 pounds was my goal weight. And so I got to 180 within a few months, probably three months, by cutting the carbs and exercising, probably three to six months. And then I quit exercising. And I knew that when I quit exercising, the weight was gonna come back off. Because I knew you had to exercise and eat right to lose weight. And what happened when I quit exercising was I ended up here, 169 lower than my goal weight with no exercise. So if you're trying to exercise your way out of a weight problem, just exercising your way out of a weight problem won't work. They t in a Danish study, they took couch potatoes, like people who did no physical activity at all. They took those couch potatoes and they uh, trained them to run marathons. So from couch potato to marathon. I mean, a marathon, super endurance, right? And guess how much weight they lost on average? Anyone? <coughs> 30. Five pounds from, from couch potato to marathon. They lost five pounds on average. Exercise actually, 
Exercise is good for you in a lot of ways. It releases endorphins, it makes you feel good, it can help your HDL cholesterol. Uh, and exercise is not a way to lose weight because exercise makes you hungry. You burn the calories. And I, oh, I hate watching that show, The Biggest Loser. They take those poor, morbidly obese people and they make them do these horrible exercises where, you know, it, it wouldn't be an exciting television show. If they put them on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, then they would get to where they would lose all the weight without having, without having to strain and struggle that much. And then they could do some athletic competitions afterwards. And that seems like it would be more humane. Because all of the exercise and endurance things that they're doing to those people on the television show is not, that's not helping them lose weight. It may help them build muscle. It may help them build muscle, it may help them improve their endurance, it may help them feel good about themselves. So. Right, I was going to say too, I, I was kind of the same way on my, on my journey, and I hit about 170, and that's where I, I, I mean, because I, I lose so much weight. After a while, I was like, uh oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste away now, you know. That's but, what I thought. I thought I was gonna waste away. <laughs> but I hit 170, and then I didn't lose anymore. I guess that's like where I'm supposed to be, you know. So, but, <coughs> any, any, any other questions? Can you find those along the way? No, 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 not really. It was a steady. It was easy. I mean, it really was. That's the thing. Is like I, I, I didn't want to, you know, make that point. Is when started it, I thought this is going to be hard to do, but it really wasn't. I mean, I wasn't hungry. It was easy. I was losing weight. I was seeing like results, you know, people were, I see people on the street and say, man, you're, you're looking good. And I'd say, yeah, all right, thank you, you know, and, and uh, it, just, it just made it easier and easier, you know, as I went, I went through it. And the thing is that the diet works, but it is easier for some people than other people. And for us, we're men. Yeah. Yeah. Easier for men. And also, we are premenopausal men. <laughs> so, so, if, so. You, if you're postmenopausal, you know, we went through the slide about the, we went through the slide about how, what your net carbs should be for the day. If you're a carb counter, if you're a counter, if you want to look at, if you, count, if you want to numbers, then get the Atkins book. But basically, somewhere at less than, Less than 20 net carbs per day, you're definitely going to lose weight. For a lot of people, if you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 100 net carbs per day, you're going to lose weight and you're going to get all the health benefits we're talking about here. You're going to have low insulin, low blood sugar, you're going to stop that insulin cascade of disease at this 60 to 100 level. But the thing is, if so I mean the whole range is somewhere from 20 to 100. If you're a young, healthy male, you can eat more carbs and still lose weight. It's not fair. If you're uh, if you're older, uh, if you're female, the number is a little lower. If you're postmenopausal female, the number is lower. So you have to carb restrict even more to get the same level of result. All right, thank you, Bob. Our next uh, guest you. speaker is here. The next guest speaker is here. I'd like to introduce everybody. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to apologize to Mark because I didn't make him a slide like this. So let's see if we can get you a background. We'll give you this. Well, you're not really schooled. Okay, here you go. This is kind of a generic background. So Dr. Mark Hall, he's a physician. He's a pediatrician here in town. And I believe that, I could be wrong, but I believe I kind of mentioned to him uh, wheat-free diet. Did I mention that to you? Yeah. The, uh, when I was, became a sold out believer and I was telling everybody. And then I want him to tell the story of, uh, story of his blood pressure and his blood pressure medications. And he can also tell you some about how he eats and what on earth do, do you eat if you don't eat bread. So that you're not just hearing the story from me. Are you pre -minimum? 
Yes. Um, well, let me see. Okay, maybe about a year and a half ago, I was at the farmer's market talking to Justin. I didn't have long to talk to him. It was just short conversation. He started talking about wheat and his family was off of it. So not a lot of information. I remember going away thinking, well, that's kind of weird. And Justin doesn't strike me as the sort of person to do something weird like that. But uh, that was my first introduction. Started hearing about it more on uh, the media occasionally and ended up uh, having supper with a friend of mine who's a family practice doctor. And, and he talked about it in length and uh, amazing stories about some of his patients who had inflammatory bowel disease and that. And that so I got, I got the book, Wheat Belly, and read it. And I was convinced, and I didn't really have, there weren't any issues that I was concerned about that I needed to go away um, that, the, that that book addressed. But it just sounded like, you know, this is not good for us. Modern wheat is bad stuff. And the inflammation that it causes, and coronary artery disease down, down the line. So I decided to stop eating wheat, at least to, to do it for, for a short time. Um, that would allow me to be able to get through it if I didn't to try to make it a permanent thing. But uh, first thing I noticed about six weeks later is that my back stopped hurting. About three decades ago, I was in a car wreck, got rear-ended, and every day since that day, my upper back had, has hurt. Uh, sometimes more than others, but every day. And it just stopped. And I, I figured that the trauma that occurred there, the inflammation that was there, just never was able to leave. When you have inflammation as a fire that kind of feeds itself, it will eventually die down. But if, if you smash your thumb and every day you, you're knocking it against something, it never will heal up. And that the inflammation that we causes was jacking up my back and it stopped hurting all the other. And I can't tell you how happy I was. Um, I've had high blood pressure for a number of years now. And, and my dad had high blood pressure. And, and I was on three medications, uh, an ACE inhibitor and two diuretics. And even then, my blood pressure was poorly controlled. It was, on a good day, it was, say, 150 over 90. And most days weren't good days. But I didn't want to get on another medicine. I, I would will it to go down. So I took my blood pressure about three times a week. And so around that same time, my back stopped hurting. My blood pressure started dropping. And I didn't put two and two together, I don't know why, but after another week or so, my blood pressure was, was like in the low 90s and the over low 50s, so I figured I better stop taking my blood pressure medicine. And then I realized the only thing I'm doing different is I'm not eating wheat. And uh, it's been that way ever since. Um, I didn't really, I wasn't looking to lose weight, uh, but I lost about 15 pounds just in the, in the course of it in those first few months. Um, I always admire guys that carry their weight well when they do gain weight. Uh, just my genetics, if I gain 15 pounds, it's all in my belly and my face. And I look ridiculous. Um, and I didn't ever have a problem even with that till I was like 35, I'm almost, I'll be 50 in March. And uh, yeah, around, around 35 or so, uh, it was hard to keep that extra 15 or 20 pounds off all the time, but now I don't really watch what I eat in that sense. I just, I just don't eat wheat. And I, and, and also in just in all that reading that I was doing, um, Wheat Belly and other, other resources, I just realized how, uh, you know, our food pyramid was just made up by politicians. There's no scientific basis for it, and. Uh, when they started mandating that everybody, you know, eats, mandating, whatever, um, starts eating 300 grams of carbohydrates a day, well, that's when the America started developing obesity epidemic. So I eat less than 100 a day, and I don't eat wheat. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, what do you eat? And wheat is in a lot of things, and um, you do have to make some effort, but um, I also am a big believer in just not eating processed foods in the first place now, and uh, one, of the, one of the reasons for that is just the oils that are in those vegetable oils are terrible for you. 
Cholesterol and fat doesn't cause heart disease. Inflammation causes heart disease, and, and vegetable oils are, are part of that problem. They, it's like taking a Brillo pad and scrubbing the inside of your arteries. Um, so I stay away from most boxed, packaged, ready-to-go stuff that has a lot of ingredients in it because it always contains those oils because they're more stable. But, you know, I can go to the meat department and I can go to the vegetable section and the, and the fruit section and um, I eat, if I want to eat pasta, I eat pasta that's not made with the same, as long as it says durum on it, uh, then it's not made with modern wheat, which is the problem. And I don't eat a lot of it, like I said, I probably keep it under about 100 grams a day. I have eight chickens in my backyard, just over here in Tech Terrace, and uh, I eat a lot of eggs. I eat at least four eggs a day with bacon, um, sometimes six, because they're in other, I put them in other things. And, um, my doctor, last time I went to see him a few months ago, wanted to, he said, it's been a long time since we've done blood work on you. I almost told him not to do it because I really don't believe it matters what your cholesterol is anymore. Uh, but I was curious, so um, we did it, and my total cholesterol was 150, and all the other numbers were perfect, too. And, and I cook everything in butter or bacon grease. I ate a lot of eggs. Um, when you don't eat carbohydrates, a lot more of your calories come from fat. And as long as you keep it under, you know, that 2,000 calories or whatever you expend during the day, it, it doesn't act in the same way as carbohydrates. And, and it doesn't, fats don't make you fat. It doesn't cause heart disease. That's my story. Any questions? If not, then. All right. Well, thanks for. Do you happen to know, this is kind of a random question, because you live in St. Clair, is there a city ordinance of what's over? We've got to get some chickens, because, I mean, is there... There's no not. Ordinance? There's, there's not. no city ordinance. Um, you don't want to have roosters, right. because there, there are city ordinances that say uh, that if you have something like that that's a nuisance, then they'll come after you. But the city doesn't like you having them. So I've heard stories from people that if they found that they had them, they told them they had to get rid of them anyway, and, but, they, but they can't produce an ordinance for it. So just don't have a rooster and uh, give your neighbors eggs so that they're not inclined to <laughs> complain about it, and you'll be all right. Chickens are very quiet, they're very clean, as long as you don't have a rooster. So. I have a question. Uh, based on what, what Justin has said and what you have said, my question is, I'm assuming that you all think it's, it's safe for young children to do this diet as well. As a pediatrician, do you feel that way too? Yes, I, I tell my, um, I, I was an evangelist for, the, uh, for a while there, sir, and I still tell people about it, but I was telling everybody about it when uh, those changes occurred. But, uh, yeah, it's, it certainly isn't a problem to not eat wheat. And we have a lot of kids. You wouldn't believe how many kids I see that are obese, that are, I mean, it's terrible the effects that it, that it has on them. And telling them to cut down on carbohydrates, just you know, keep, it, keep it to a minimum, less than 100. That can't hurt anybody. And, and you get enough carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables that you, you know, if, I mean, if you're, if you're wanting to cut out all those starchy things, you can. It's not going to hurt you. You get all the carbohydrates you need from fruits and vegetables. But even if you want to add, you know, rice and pasta and some of that, just keep it in a reasonable, to a reasonable amount. And you'll be okay. I don't have a lot of people that take me up on that. People eat what they eat. And it's uh, hard for a lot of people to change that. Yes, I do have a few people that take me up on it when they feel like things are just too much to manage. And uh, I've had two, and so many of our kids have attention deficit disorder. I hate even calling it that. I think there's a normal spectrum of human behavior, and God did not make children 
to sit for eight hours quietly and concentrating on things, but nevertheless, uh, with that with that diagnosis, um, I've had a, a couple of uh, moms that put me up on it, and definitely saw them for Are there kids off medication now, or no? Uh, no, no, but you know, if medication doesn't fix the problem, it just makes it more manageable, and but you still got to manage it. It's much more manageable. Chickens are not smart animals, but at night time they're smart enough to put themselves up. So we close the door after they put themselves up. You can come over at lunch and see them. We're going to have lunch at the house. So uh, we'll do a closing, this kind of closing section. Remember there's always more to learn. And this is School of the Domestic Arts in Lubbock. I recommend that you Google it. And they do cooking classes, gardening classes. They're a place where you can get fermented foods. Fermented foods contain a lot of probiotics, which are good for your digestive health. They have a Facebook page, School of the Domestic Arts, and then blog, schoolofthedomesticarts.com. And so definitely check them out. If you want to learn more about health, am I too loud? OK. If you want to learn more about healthy foods, whole foods, gardening, they'll tell you that. Also, the folks at the Natural Health Market, these guys are really intelligent and really well, really knowledgeable about probiotics and nutrients and digestive enzymes, other uh, supplements, multivitamins, things that you might want to know about. And I'll, I'll tell you the story of this baby here. This is baby Olivia, who you guys met earlier. This is when she was about four months old. And baby Olivia was a colicky baby. From the day she was born, she had green, watery, greasy baby food. And it was not normal. And we kept thinking it would go away. She was colicky, she cried all the time, she screamed, she was tense, just tense and clutched up. My wife and I were at the end of our rope after about four months. We called the pediatrician. We sent a stool sample in via the pediatrician, and the lab said the stool was normal. But we knew that green, watery, slimy poop for four months in a baby was not normal. And we thought, well, maybe the baby, they have like probiotics or something for a baby. And we didn't even know. So we called over at the Natural Health Market and we asked them, do they have, is there like, pro we told them what was going on with the baby and said, are there like probiotics or something for the baby? And the lady who answered the phone said, oh yeah. She said, was the baby born C-section? And we said, yes. And she said, well, every C-section baby needs probiotics because they don't get the beneficial bacteria passing through the birth canal. They don't get that bacteria that they need to digest their milk and their food. So every C-section should have probiotics. So my father-in-law picked up the probiotics at the natural health market, carried them to the house, we gave them to the baby, and in two days, the baby was completely transformed. After four months, the baby had the first normal baby poop that the baby had ever made. The colic was gone, the screaming was gone, all of the clenched up and tightness, and the tightness in being clenched up must have just been from pain, she must have felt horrible, was gone. So there's more to learn in people like the Natural Health Market, either at 82nd Street in Quaker, or at 50th Street, just west of Memphis. They can be a good resource for you. Probiotics, we mentioned, Omega-3s, there's a whole discussion about, that's why Dr. Hall said, you know, the vegetable oils are bad for you because they contain the omega-6 fats. Small versus large LDL, we had the cholesterol discussion earlier. There's a book called the Cholesterol Clarity by Jimmy Moore. You can read that book if you want to learn more about cholesterol. And supplements, I recommend just about everybody take a vitamin D supplement. And how much should you take? Most doctors measure your vitamin D levels now as part of your health panel. 
So you should take enough vitamin D supplements to get your vitamin D to the high level of normal. If high, vitamin D levels, I think, are normal between like 30 and 150. And, you know, uh, my vitamin D might be 31. It's normal, but I would say that it's not optimal. You should take enough vitamin D supplements to get yourself retested until you get up towards the high normal. Most patients need an omega-3 like a fish oil and also a multivitamin. And the reason you need a multivitamin is because we're deficient. The soils are deficient of trace elements. Trace elements and minerals like selenium, manganese, things like that. You'll get those from a good high quality multivitamin. So pick a book and keep learning. If you want to stop drinking, this book is called Alcohol Lied to Me. Very successful. If you want to stop smoking, this is Alan Carr's easy way to stop smoking. And I went on a health journey, and essentially, I lost the weight first, and then I stopped the Diet Cokes, and then I thought, well, you know, alcohol is not really like a healthy thing for me, so I stopped drinking. So it was all, it's all part of the same process, the same journey. Weak Belly is a book I definitely recommend. This movie, Fathead, Fathead the movie, you can watch it for YouTube for free. The guy eats fast food every single day. Uh, he eats fast food, KFC, Taco Bell, uh, McDonald's, every single day for a month. And you know what he does? He loses weight. And you know how he does it? By keeping his carbohydrate count less than 100 net carbs a day. So, uh, I don't recommend you do that. I don't think it's the healthiest thing for your body. But, you can eat out as long as you cut the carbs. You, you can eat out with regular people at a regular restaurant sometimes. Just uh, uh, cut the carbs. The Alzheimer's disease book, I just recommend that because this is a, a lady, she's a physician, she treats her husband with uh, coconut oil to improve the symptoms of his Alzheimer's disease. Because um, low carbohydrate ketogenic diets force your brain to run on ketones. Ketones fuel the brain more efficiently than sugar. So patients with Alzheimer's disease can get better on coconut oil and low carb, high carb, low carb, high fat diet. And what we were taught in medical school was that there are three choices. When some patient has a disease, the patient can either suffer with the disease or the patient can take a medication. But there are two problems with taking a medication. Number one is that often the medications are lifelong. Just like, just like Dr. Hall said, he had blood pressure, he had high blood pressure for years. He was on three medications for blood pressure. And to get rid of those three medications, all he did was cut the wheat. He didn't even cut all the killer carbs out of his diet. He just cut the wheat. So there's actually, and, and his story really shows the point that there's actually a third choice. And the third choice is that you can cut the killer carbs. So we're going to close. This is the very last section of the whole deal. And I want you guys to help me with choice three. And choice three is... <laughs> you got it, awesome. So what I'm trying to say in this presentation is that if you have weight problems, there are pills that you can take. Or you can just cut the killer carbs. If you have diabetes, there are tons of medications, there are injections that, that they've released, not just insulin, but new injections coming out all the time. And you can take the pills and you can take the shots, or you can <laughs> cut the killer <laughs> carbs. Atherosclerosis leading to heart attack and stroke. There's pills that you can take to improve those risk factors, or you can just cut the killer carbs. And remember, all these risk factors, gone. Those are heart disease risk factors, gone by this change in diet. High blood pressure, just like Dr. Hall, you can take three medications, or there are over 200 medications listed, you can take your pills, or you can just cut the killer carbs. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, leading to infertility in women. You've heard stories of people uh, Today, and you could either take the pills or you can cut the killer carbs. Alzheimer's disease, we talked about the ketogenic diet, there are pills you can take or you can cut the killer carbs.
And we just talked about, Dr. Hall talked about Ritalin ADHD. You can get improvements in these kids' behaviors with medication, or you can also cut the killer carbs. Depression, the same thing. There are like a million depression medications out there. The thing is that wheat has certain, the exorphins in wheat, they kind of mess with your brain chemistry and the addictive, uh, also the addictive aspects don't help either. So if you have depression, you can take a, a ton of different medications or you can cut the killer carbs. As with an allergy, the same. You can take the meds or you can cut the killer carbs. And this is the one I find the most irritating, irritable bowel syndrome. Because digestive, di lots of digestive issues are a direct result of toxicity of the food, like the wheat gluten is irritating your digestive system. And you can take a pill like this, and the asterisk says, this was seen in animal studies, and the relevance to humans is not known. So you can take a pill with relevance to humans, it is not known. Or you can just Cut the killer cars. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's it. Thank you. Uh, what was your suggestion for the smoothie? My smoothie suggestion is called Firm and Burn. Firm and Burn. It's chocolate and peanut butter uh, with 